So one of, another new track that I made on my new album, Bird Brain, is called Big and Round. And it was started because I had to go on a cabin trip to Minnesota with the family. And the only thing I could fit in my backpack was the machine from Native Instruments uh, to make beats. And I thought it would be a cool time because I was going to be up there with nothing to do to like, just like get into a piece of gear that I hadn't used before. And so I ended up making this loop and all my little nephews and nieces were walking around listening to headphones tell me if they liked it or not. And it was really funny. So what I, I did is I just opened up the steroid 808 kit and then I just set up uh, that I really like the sound of the toms. I don't know if I can play them unless I had, I don't have this hooked up right now, but usually it would be hooked up. But I set up four toms and then I just tuned them so that they would be in a melodic pattern. And then I mess with their decays and stuff. And, then, and they just come with like a nice little reverb on them already. They're like pumped up or something. And then I just put this little vocal sample and mess with the pitch and stuff. It's actually all in the program, these sounds. I didn't use any samples. And then I set up some scenes where the, added a hi-hat kind of thing and just played with that. And then, the, then, the, then this became the main loop right here. In this program, I was having a hard time uh, loading in a kind of a heavy kick and getting these toms to sit with the kick because there's not like a lot of external processing and reason like I can't just latch on a, an EQ to this scene, which would be cool if you could. <laughs> uh, so what I decided to do was just take this pattern as this as the starting off point for the track and then go into Ableton and make the track itself. So I don't usually make a whole track in Ableton, but this was really loop based off of those the loop that I just uh, showed you in Machine. So I decided, but as you can hear right away, once you get it in, you can put some processing on it. It's totally popping in a different way. I mean, it just sounds 10 times better already, right? It's just... That's the same hi-hat pattern that we just heard, but we've just put a different set of EQs on it. I don't even have EQs on it, it's just volumed up the right way. There's nothing on it. Amazing. So then what's happened on this track is that I had another big problem, as you'll hear in a second. The, uh, the kick and the toms are kind of fighting for the same space in the frequencies. So I couldn't get the kick to sound right. I don't have the other version where it was a mess. But I will show you what we had to do here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this. <laughs> but you guys probably understand it better than me even. What I've done is I've routed the kick into a bus. I've never done this kind of crap before, but it worked. So the kick is all routed into a bus, and then the bus has its own set of effects on it, which are playing against the tom sound in a side chain. Does that make sense? <laughs> so this, this side chain is going against the tom sound so whenever it's on for that millisecond, you'll see it's pulling that other sound down, but just for that fraction of a millisecond, which is the whole concept behind the side chain. And therefore you can still hear the kick and the tom, and you can't really, the tom psychologically is still there for you, but it's dipping, but it's not annoying. It's not like, to get a big kick, it's kind of like a construction process. You can't just have this big kick pop through your mix. You gotta build it a little bit up by having like ticks on top.
like that's actually going to be the kick with that big sub and now it, it pops out and this so this is just the moog you can see there's a lot of stuff going on in here where i'm going i'm actually playing with the panning going side to side but then i copied it two of them are going side to side and one of them isn't I wasn't getting like this like wide sound that I really like so if you listen to this in headphone it'd be swirling around your head like, like big boobies <laughs> which is kind of the point of the track and then on the next one all I did kind of a ghetto way to do it but instead of going and redoing it I just I just lowered it an octave in Ableton on the other one and then I could do the octave and it sounded fine so I didn't go and redo it hey you don't need anything she just said hey one time and then I copied it three times set them back from each other and put some reverb on one of them and now it sounds like there's a bunch of girls going hey but really it's just one person hey. I mean and it pops out of the mix and it sounds like there's hey. a you can really do anything once you have one thing on top the boing 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 it's just me going boing 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 then copied one set back from the other so it gives you the stereo field and then there's a little Jews harp on top giving you that twang 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 like those things you stick in your mouth there's this one was funny. I found this sound on the internet and I just thought it was funny. <laughs> right? There you go. And that's basically it. So you have the original toms, the kick that we built, a hi-hat pattern, the Moog, some accent, hey, some other little like sound effects, and then you pretty much got the whole thing right there. A little guitar thing comes in, and just staggering the kicks gives you a whole different feel for that, and like changing it up in the club for a minute, and then, then my wife came in and did like a little clip, and I just chopped it up and it 